This is part 40 of Blazor tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to perform edit and update operation. In our previous videos in this series, we discussed how to retrieve existing employee data and display it in the edit form as you can see right here. We also discussed form validation. When we click the submit button, we want to save this data in the underlying database table. We'll discuss how to do that in this video. First, let's take a look at the API project because it is this project that saves and retrieves employee data from the underlying employees database table. Within our employees controller, we have this update employee method. It has two parameters, the ID of the employee that we want to update and the employee object with the changes. This ID parameter is not mandatory because the employee object itself will contain the employee ID. But we chose to pass it because we can check if the ID that is passed in the URL and the ID in the employee object match. If they don't match, then there is something wrong going on. So we display a validation error saying employee ID mismatch. If there is a match, then we try to retrieve that employee from the underlying database table. If we have found the employee, then we pass that employee object to update employee method of the employee repository, which will save the employee data in the underlying database table. Next, we want to be able to call this update employee method from our Blazor web project. For that, we already created this wrapper service I employee service. We need a new method. The signature of this method is going to be very similar to get employee. So let's make a copy and then change the name of the method to update employee. This method returns the updated employee. So the return type is task of employee. And to this method, we need to pass the employee object that contains the changes. And let's call the parameter updated employee. Our obvious next step is to provide the implementation for this new update employee method with an employee service. Notice we already have a red squiggly here because we are missing the implementation for update employee method. Let's ask Visual Studio to generate the methods tab by pressing control period and then select this option implement interface. Just like get employee and get employees, implementation is a one liner. So let's make a copy of this. For a get request, we use get JSON async, but here we are performing an update operation. So we use put JSON async. Next to our API controller update employee method, we need to pass two parameters, the ID of the employee and the employee object. We can actually get the employee ID from this employee object itself. So let's keep it simple by deleting this ID parameter and then this additional if check. We don't have the ID parameter anymore. So let's change this to employee dot employee ID. The same thing here. Next in employee service to this endpoint API slash employees, we need to pass this incoming employee object. Remember, our API controller update employee method returns a single employee object that is the updated employee object. We are not getting an array back. So let's remove both these square brackets here and we are using await keyword. So let's use the async keyword as well. Next in our edit employee component, when the submit button is clicked, this form will be submitted. And if there are no validation errors, then this method handle valid submit will be called. And we already have this method within our component class. And also notice into this component class, we have the employee service already injected. So let's use this employee service and call update employee method. To this method, we need to pass the employee object. But if we take a look at our edit form, it is bound to edit employee model object, not the employee object. And remember, Blazor provides two-way data binding. This means if we make any changes on this form, those changes will automatically make their way into this edit employee model. We don't have to write any code for that. But then our update employee method here is expecting employee object, not edit employee model object. So we need to map edit employee model to employee object. And we are already doing it within on initialized async method. So here we are mapping the employee object to edit employee model. Now we need to do the reverse map. So let's make a copy of this and then change the order. 
pass this employee object to update employee method and we know this update employee method is an async method so let's await its execution and store the result in a variable. Since we are using await keyword let's change the signature of this handle valid submit method to return a task and turn this method into an async method. On a successful update this update employee method returns the updated employee object back so if result not equal to null update is successful and we want to redirect the user to employee list component for that we need to inject another service navigation manager service we can then use the service to navigate the user to employee list component notice on the navigation manager service we have navigate to method and our employee list component is available at the application root url so to this method we specify a single forward slash so if the update is successful we redirect the user to the employee list component otherwise we stay on this edit employee component and display the validation errors if any with all these changes in place let's run our project and take a look at the browser we are on the home page let's click edit on one of the employees let's change the first name for example to sam1 and then click submit notice we've got an unhandled exception let's launch browser developer tools HTTP request exception status code 405 method not allowed we have this error because notice within our API controller this update employee method is expecting employee ID parameter but then within our employee service when we call this endpoint we're not passing the ID parameter that's the reason we have this 405 method not allowed exception to fix this all we need to do is within our API controller get rid of this ID parameter we don't need it anymore and then build our solution let's include a value of 1 both in first name and last name fields a word of caution here we cannot really use this department name input field to change the department name we only included this field here to demonstrate complex model validation off screen I'm going to keep this field commented on our edit employee component notice now when we click the submit button update successful and when we click the edit button we see the updated values here as well if there are any validation errors on the form we see those errors and now when we click the submit button nothing happens that's it in this video thank you for listening Thank you.